Hello dear students, welcome to Neet Shala and this is your host Suyashi Vineet. So let's start unit 3, cell structure and functions. First of all, they have discussed about a scientist G. N. Ramachandran. G. N. Ramachandran, an outstanding figure in the field of protein structure, was the founder of Madras School of Conformational Analysis of Biopolymers. His discovery of the triple helical structure of collagen published in Nature in 1954 and his analysis of the allowed conformations of protein through the use of Ramachandran plot rank among the most outstanding contributions in structural biology. He was born on 8th October 1992 in a small town not so far from Cochin on the southwestern coast of India. His father was a professor of mathematics at the local college and thus had considerable influence in shaping Ramachandran's in interest in mathematics. After completing his school years, Ramachandran graduated in 1942 as the top ranking student in B.Sc. Honours Physics course of the University of Madras. He received a PhD from Cambridge University in 1949. While at Cambridge, Ramachandran met Linus Pauling and was deeply influenced by his publications on models of the alpha helix and beta sheet structures that directed his attention to solving the structure of collagen. He passed away at the age of 78 on April 7, 2001. So this was the introduction part. Now let's start with the chapter. Chapter 8. Cell. The unit of life. When you look around, you see both living and non-living things. You must have wondered and asked yourself, what is it that makes an organism living or what is it that an inanimate thing does not have which a living thing has? The answer to this question is the presence of basic unit of life, cell, in all living organisms. All organisms are composed of cells. Some are composed of single cell and are called unicellular organisms. While others like us, composed of many cells, are called multicellular organisms. 8.1 What is a cell? Unicellular organisms are capable of independent existence and performing the essential functions of life. Anything less than a complete structure of a cell does not ensure independent living. Hence, cell is the fundamental, structural and functional unit of all living organisms. Anton von Leeuwenhoek first saw and described a live cell. Robert Brown later discovered nucleus. The invention of the microscope and its improvement leading to the electron microscope revealed all the structural details of the cell. 8.2 Cell Theory in 1838, Matthias Claydon, a German botanist, examined a large number of plants and observed that all plants are composed of different kinds of cells which form the tissues of the plant. At about the same time, Theodore Sizwan, 1839, a British zoologist, studied different types of animal cells and reported that cells had a thin outer layer which is today known as the plasma membrane. He also concluded based on his studies on plant tissues that the presence of cell wall is a unique characteristic of all plant cells. On the basis of this, Suzwan proposed the hypothesis that the bodies of animals and plants are composed of cells and the products of cells. Sclayden and Sizwan together formulated the cell theory. This theory, however, did not explain as to how new cells were formed. Rudolf Virchow, 1855, explained the cells divided and new cells are formed from pre-existing cells. Popularly, we call it omicellulae cellular. He modified the hypothesis of Sclayden and Sizwan to give a 
cell theory a final shape cell theory as understood today is all living organisms are composed of cells and products of cells all cells arise from pre-existing cells 8.3 an overview of cell you have earlier observed that in an onion peel and or human cheek cells under the microscope let us recollect their structure the onion cell which is a typical plant cell has a distinct cell wall as its outer boundary and just within it is the cell membrane so i repeat the onion cell which is a typical plant cell has a distinct cell wall as its outer boundary and just within it is the cell membrane the cells of the human cheek have an outer membrane as the delimiting structure of the cell inside each cell is a dense membrane bound structure called nucleus this nucleus contains the chromosome which in turn contains the genetic material dna cells that have membrane bound nuclei are called eukaryotic whereas cells that lack a membrane bound nucleus are called prokaryotic in both prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells a semi fluid matrix called cytoplasm occupies the volume of the cell the cytoplasm is the main arena of cellular activities in both the plant and animal cells various chemical reactions occur in it to keep the cell in living state besides nucleus the eukaryotic cells have other membrane bound distinct structures called organelles like endoplasmic reticulum golgi complex lysosomes mitochondria microbodies and vacuoles the prokaryotic cells lack such membrane bound organelles ribosomes are non membrane bound organelles found in all cells both eukaryotic as well as prokaryotic within the cell ribosomes are found not only in the cytoplasm but also within the two organelles chloroplast in plants and mitochondria and on rough endoplasmic reticulum i'll repeat this paragraph once again ribosomes are non membrane bound organelles found in all cells both eukaryotic as well as prokaryotic within the cell ribosomes are found not only in the cytoplasm but also within the two organelles chloroplast in case of plants and mitochondria and on rough endoplasmic reticulum animal cells contain another non membrane bound organelle called centriole which help in cell division cells differ greatly in size shape and activities for example mycoplasmas the smallest cells are only 0.3 mm in length while bacteria could be 3 to 5 mm the largest isolated single cell is the egg of an ostrich among multicellular organisms human rbcs are about 7.0 mm in diameter nerve cells are some of the longest cells cells also vary greatly in shape they may be disc like polygonal columnar cuboid thread like or even irregular the shape of the cell may vary with the function they perform and this is the diagram showing different shapes of the cell you can see here red blood cells which are round and biconcave white blood cells are amoeboid columnar epithelial cells are long and narrow nerve cells branched and long a tracheid is elongated mesophyll cells are round and oval now 8.4 prokaryotic cells the prokaryotic cells are represented by bacteria blue green algae mycoplasma and pp elo pleuronemonia like organisms they are generally smaller and multiply more rapidly than eukaryotic cell they may vary greatly in shape and size the four basic shapes of bacteria are bacillus which is rod like 
coccus which is spherical, vibrio which is comma shaped and spirillum which is spiral shaped. I repeat rod like is bacillus, spherical is coccus, comma shaped is vibrio and spiral shaped is spirillum. The organization of prokaryotic cell is fundamentally similar even though prokaryotes exhibit a wide variety of shapes and functions. All prokaryotes have a cell wall surrounding the cell membrane. The fluid matrix filling the cell is the cytoplasm. There is no well-defined nucleus. The genetic material is basically naked, not enveloped by a nuclear membrane. In addition to genomic DNA, the single chromosome or circular DNA, many bacteria have smaller circular DNA outside the genomic DNA. These smaller DNA are called plasmids. The plasmid DNA confers a certain unique phenotypic character to such bacteria. One such character is the resistance to antibiotics. In higher classes, you will learn that this plasmid DNA is used to monitor bacterial transformation with foreign DNA. Nuclear membrane is found in eukaryotes. No organelles like the ones in eukaryotes are found in prokaryotes except for ribosomes. I repeat, no organelles like the ones in eukaryotes are found in prokaryotic cells except for ribosomes. Prokaryotes have something unique in the form of inclusions. A specialized differentiated form of cell membrane called mesosome is the characteristic of prokaryotes. They are essentially infoldings of cell membrane. And this is the diagram showing comparison of eukaryotic cell with other organisms. This is figure 8.2. You can see this is a typical eukaryotic cell and typical bacterial cell 1 to 2 mu meter pplo and viruses now 8.4.1 cell envelope and its modifications most prokaryotic cells particularly the bacterial cells have a chemically complex cell envelope the cell envelope consists of a tightly bound three led structure that is the outermost glycocalyx followed by the cell wall and then the plasma membrane. Although each layer of the uh, envelope performs distinct functions, they act together as a single protective unit. Bacteria can be classified into two groups on the basis of differences in the cell envelopes and the manner in which they respond to the staining procedures developed by gram with those that can take up gram stain are gram positive and others that do not take are called gram negative bacteria. Glycocalyx differ in composition and thickness among different bacteria. It could be a loose sheath called slime layer in some, while in others it may be a thick and tough called capsule. The cell wall determines the shape of the cell and provides a strong structural support to prevent the bacterium from bursting or collapsing. The plasma membrane is semi-permeable in nature and interacts with the outside world. This membrane is similar structurally to that of the eukaryotes. A special membranous structure is the mesosome which is formed by the extension of plasma membrane into the cell. These extensions are in the form of vesicles, tubules and lamella. They help in the cell wall formation, DNA replication and distribution to daughter cells. They also help in respiration, secretion process to increase the surface area of plasma membrane and enzymatic content. In some prokaryotes like cyanobacteria, there are other membranous extensions into the cytoplasm which is known as chromatophores which contain pigments. Bacterial cell may be motile or non-motile. If motile, they have thin filamentous extensions from their cell wall called flagella. Bacteria shows a range in the number and arrangement of flagella.
Bacterial flagellum is composed of three parts, filament, hook and basal body. The filament is the longest portion and extends from cell surface to outside. Besides flagella, pili and fimbriae are also surface structures of the bacteria but do not play a role in motility. The pili are elongated tubular structures made up of special proteins. The fimbriae are small bristle-like fibrous sprouting out of the cell. In some bacteria, they are also known to help attach the bacteria to rocks in steams and also to the host tissues. 8.4.2 Ribosomes and Inclusion Bodies In prokaryotes, the ribosomes are associated with plasma membrane of the cell. They are about 15 to 20 nanometer in size and are made of two subunits, the 50s and 30s units, which when present together form 70s prokaryotic ribosomes. Ribosomes are site of protein synthesis. Several ribosomes may attach to a single mRNA and form a chain called polyribosomes or polysomes. The ribosome of a polysome translates the mRNA into proteins. Inclusion bodies. Reserve material in prokaryotic cell are stored in the cytoplasm in the form of inclusion bodies. I repeat, reserve material in prokaryotic cells are stored in the cytoplasm in the form of inclusion bodies. These are not bounded by any membrane system and lie free in the cytoplasm. Example, phosphate granules, cyanophycine granules and glycogen granules. I repeat, inclusion bodies are not bounded by any membrane system and lie free in the cytoplasm. Example, phosphate granules, cyanophycine granules and glycogen granules. Gas vacuoles are found in blue-green algae and purple-green photosynthetic bacteria. So this is part one and I would end it here. The eukaryotic cells we will start in the next video. Thank you. Stay tuned. Wish you all the very best.